Thank you for joining us for this colonoscopy preparation course. The main goals of this slideshow are to explain why you were referred for a colonoscopy and what a colonoscopy is, to talk about the risks involved and other choices you have, and to review how to prepare for the colonoscopy in order to get the most accurate results. Your primary care provider may have referred you for a colonoscopy for one of these reasons. You are 50 years old or older, which means you are at higher risk for colon cancer. You have seen blood from your rectum or have had a stool blood test that was positive. You have a personal history or a family history of colon cancer or a certain kind of polyps. Your provider wants to find out why you're having other symptoms. There are several reasons why you may have blood in your stool or bleeding from your rectum. These pictures show common stool tests. Let's talk about why these tests may show positive results for blood. One possible cause of blood in the stool is inflammation of the lining of the colon. This is called colitis. Blood in the stool can also be caused by hemorrhoids. These are enlarged veins that can be on the outside of the rectum or on the inside. Sometimes these veins can bleed. An anal fissure is a cut or a tear in the skin of the rectum. This can cause bleeding from the rectum. If you have an anal fissure, you may feel pain in your rectum when you have a bowel movement. Colon polyps may cause blood in the stool. A colon polyp is a small growth of cells on the lining of the colon. We don't know why some people get colon polyps and others do not. If we see a colon polyp during your colonoscopy, we will remove it if we can. A polyp can sometimes grow into colon cancer. If a polyp is removed, it cannot grow, and we may have prevented colon cancer. Colon cancer can also cause blood in the stool. We can treat colon cancer, especially if we find it early, before it has grown too much. Colon cancer is the third most common kind of cancer and the second leading cause of cancer-related death. It affects men and women of all races. People who are age 50 or older are at higher risk for colon cancer, as well as people with a personal or family history of certain kinds of polyps or colon cancer. Obesity can also increase your risk. Other risks include a diet low in fiber and high in fat, an inactive lifestyle, and smoking. A colonoscopy is the best test to look for problems in the lining of the colon, to screen for colon cancer, and to find out why there is blood in the stool. The procedure takes 30 to 45 minutes to complete and is usually very safe. First, you will get sedative medicine to make you sleepy and comfortable. The procedure uses a camera that is at the end of a flexible tube. The tube is about five feet long and about as wide as a pointer finger. We place the tube in your rectum and gently push it all the way through your colon. As it moves, the camera allows us to look carefully at the entire lining of your colon. As with any medical procedure, a colonoscopy has risks. You could have a bad reaction to the sedation medicine, bleeding if we take tissue samples called biopsies, or remove polyps. There is a small chance, less than one patient in 1,000, that the doctor accidentally pokes a hole in the large intestine during the colonoscopy. If this happens, it may require surgery to repair. There is a small chance of infection. There is also a small chance that we may not see something that is there. Colon problems can hide in a fold of the colon's lining, but this usually only happens if there is stool still left in the colon. That is why it is so important to carefully follow all the instructions you receive about preparing for your colonoscopy. We want to get a good view of your colon's lining. However, we will stop your colonoscopy if the procedure becomes too risky for any reason. Having a colonoscopy is up to you. You could also choose not to have a colonoscopy. If you choose not to have a colonoscopy, there are no risks from the procedure, but we may not find colon polyps, cancer, or another problem that needs treatment. You could also have a sigmoidoscopy instead of a colonoscopy. This procedure looks only at the lower two feet of the colon. If there are problems higher up in the colon, the sigmoidoscopy would not find these. We recommend colonoscopies 
as the most thorough way to look for colon problems and to screen for colon cancer. Having this procedure is your choice, and you do have other options. When we do your colonoscopy, we need to be able to clearly see the lining of the colon so that we can find any problems. It is very important that you properly prepare your bowels and colon for your test. You will need to start preparing seven days before your colonoscopy. Some patients have general anesthesia instead of sedation for their colonoscopy. If you are having general anesthesia, you may also need to follow other instructions. We will give these instructions to you before your procedure. If you take blood thinning medicines such as Coumadin, Warfarin, Plavix, Clopidogrel, Effiant, or Pradaxa, please tell us as soon as possible and at least seven days before your colonoscopy. We will work with you and your doctor to adjust your medicines to lower the risks of bleeding. You will get more instructions once we have a plan in place. If you have diabetes and take oral diabetes medicines or insulin, Talk with a doctor who prescribes your medicines. Tell them the date and time of your colonoscopy and ask if there is anything special you need to do with your diabetes medicines on the day before or the day of your colonoscopy. Check your blood sugars as you normally do or if you feel like you are having blood sugars that are too high or too low. At least seven days before your colonoscopy, we want you to have a plan in place for who will get you safely home from the colonoscopy. Because of the sedation or anesthesia, it will not be safe for you to drive or even to take a bus or a taxi home by yourself. You will need to arrange for a responsible adult to drive you home or be with you on your trip home. Five days before your colonoscopy, we also want you to stop eating certain foods. These include raspberries, nuts, seeds, beans, corn, and peas. These foods take a long time to digest, so if you've eaten them within five days of your procedure, we may see these foods in your colon and not be able to see the colon lining. Five days before your colonoscopy, you will need to fill your prescription for the laxative medicine called bowel prep. The medicine will come in a one-gallon container. When you pick up your bowel prep from the pharmacy, it should come with flavor packets attached. If there are no flavor packets on the outside of the bottle, ask the pharmacist for them. If the pharmacist is not able to give you flavor packets, you may buy Crystal Light to add flavor to the solution. Read the instructions carefully so you know how to mix the solution. Ask your pharmacist if you have any questions about what to do. The day before your colonoscopy, you'll need to do two things to clean your colon. Do not eat any solid food. Drink clear liquids only. You will also need to take your laxative medicine. Let's talk about clear liquids. A clear liquid is one you can actually see through. Good examples of clear liquids are sports drinks, water, tea, apple juice, sodas, soup broth, and jello. Black coffee and coffee with sugar are clear liquids, but you cannot have coffee with cream in it. Also, do not eat red jello. We do not want you to have any liquids with red food coloring because red food coloring can look like blood in the colon during the colonoscopy. On the day before your procedure, you will need to drink at least two quarts of clear liquids in addition to the bowel prep. This means you will drink eight 8 ounce glasses of clear liquids. Because it is important to have a good bowel preparation, let's review what clear liquids are okay to have the day before your colonoscopy. What do you think? Are these top two pictures of clear liquids? Yes, this is a good example of a clear liquid diet of chicken soup broth, green jello, and water. How about these? Yes, apple juice and soup broth are both clear liquids. What about the bottom row of pictures? Is the soup in the first picture clear liquid? No, there are many pieces of food in the soup. What about the second bowl of soup? No, it has chunks of food in it too. And what about the orange juice? No, do not drink juice with pulp when you are on a clear liquid diet. In the morning on the day before your colonoscopy, you'll need to prepare your bowel prep. 
To do this, tear open one of the flavor packets and add it to the bottle. If you did not receive flavor packets, you may use crystal light to add to the mixture. Then add water up to the line on the side of the container, seal the container and shake it well to mix. Then put the mixture in the refrigerator to cool. When you drink the bowel prep, it should be cold. At 7 p.m. the night before your colonoscopy, start drinking the chilled bowel prep mixture you prepared. You should drink one 8-ounce glass of the mixture every 15 minutes between 7 and 10 p.m. When you're done, you should have finished three-quarters of the bottle. Bowel prep has an aftertaste, so you may want to drink sips of 7-Up, Sprite, or ginger ale after drinking each glass. You may also find the bowel prep easier to drink through a straw or over ice. It is okay to keep drinking other clear liquids while you are drinking the bowel prep. After taking bowel prep, it is normal to have abdominal cramps, bloating, and diarrhea. Some people even get chills. You should have your first bowel movement about one hour after you start drinking the bowel prep. You should expect to continue having loose bowel movements for about one to two hours after you finish drinking it. Your goal after drinking the laxative is to have watery, clear diarrhea. Some people will need to take extra laxative medicines to completely clean their colon. Ask your doctor about this. Before your procedure, we will review your medical records. Based on this review, your doctor may prescribe an extended bowel preparation. This may include a combination of Miralax and magnesium citrate, two extra laxatives. If you need to use these extra medicines, your doctor will also give you instructions for using them. The point of the bowel preparation is to clean the colon so that we can see it clearly. On the left is what we see during a colonoscopy when there has been good bowel preparation. We can easily see any problems in the colon. The middle set of pictures show a bad bowel preparation, where stool inside the colon may be hiding colon polyps or colon cancer. The slides on the right show how some colon polyps or colon cancer can be very small. This makes them hard or impossible to see if bowel preparation is poor. On the day of your colonoscopy, five hours before your procedure is scheduled, drink the rest of the bowel prep. You will drink the medicine just like you did the night before, one eight ounce glass every 15 minutes until it is gone. Do not eat any food, but you can keep drinking clear liquids. If you take blood thinner medicines or diabetes medicines, you should have already been following your doctor's instructions about what to do to prepare for your procedure. For all other medicines on the day of your test, take them either one hour before or one hour after you finish the rest of the laxative medicine. Plan to arrive at the endoscopy area 30 minutes to one hour before your colonoscopy. Your specific arrival time will be given to you when you are scheduled for the procedure. On the day of the colonoscopy, do not take anything by mouth starting two hours before your colonoscopy. When you come in for the colonoscopy, you should bring the person who is going to take you home or a phone number where we can reach that person when you are ready to be picked up after the procedure. A list of all the medicines you are taking right now. You will not need to bring anything valuable with you to the hospital. It is best if you leave anything of value at home or with the person who will take you home. Let's review. Seven days before the colonoscopy, have your plan in place for who will bring you home from the test. And please talk to your doctor about medicine for diabetes and blood thinning. Five days before the colonoscopy, stop eating nuts, seeds, beans, corn, and peas. Pick up the bowel prep and flavor packets from your pharmacy. One day before the colonoscopy, start a clear liquid diet. Mix your bowel prep in the morning and put the bottle in the refrigerator. The night before the colonoscopy from 7 to 10 p.m., follow instructions about drinking the bowel prep every 15 minutes. On the day of your colonoscopy, finish the rest of the bowel prep five hours before your scheduled procedure. Take your normal medicines at least one hour before starting your laxative or one hour after finishing. Starting two hours before your colonoscopy, 
Do not take anything by mouth, not even gum, mints, or water. Arrive at the endoscopy unit 30 minutes to one hour before the test as instructed. You will be in the endoscopy unit for a total of two and a half to three hours. We have a lot to take care of to get ready for your colonoscopy. You will sign in, meet the nurses, change into a hospital gown, get connected to heart rate monitors, put on a blood pressure cuff, get oxygen through your nose, and the nurse will place a tube called an IV into your vein. You will receive medicines and fluids through this IV. Your doctor will talk to you about the procedure so you can ask any questions you may have. You will then sign an informed consent document that gives us permission to do the colonoscopy. The colonoscopy will take about 30 to 45 minutes. You may sleep through the whole test or you may be awake through parts of it. Both of these are normal. The colonoscopy procedure does not hurt. You may feel some cramping in your stomach. We put air into the colon to inflate it so we can see all of the lining more clearly and this can cause some discomfort. If we see something abnormal in your colon, like a polyp, we will remove it or take a small tissue sample. This sample is called a biopsy. Taking a biopsy will not cause pain. We will send the tissue sample to the lab where pathologists will look at it under a microscope. We will have the results of the biopsy in seven to 10 days. We will notify you of the results. After the colonoscopy, you will be in the recovery room for 30 to 60 minutes. You will talk with the doctor and get pictures of what we saw during the colonoscopy. You will also get written instructions to follow at home and a phone number to call if you have any problems or questions after the procedure. Let's review what is a clear liquid. How about the first one? No, rice is not a clear liquid. The next one? No, we can't see through it and it contains small seeds. The burger and fries? No, this is just food. How about the first one on the bottom row? No. The next one? No, it has pieces of food in it. How about the jello? No, most jello is okay, but not red jello because red food coloring can look like blood in colonoscopy pictures. How about coffee with milk? No. What about black coffee? Yes, black coffee is a clear liquid. And the last one? No, no chocolate, no milk, and no marshmallows. Here are some examples of colons in people who did not follow the PrEP instructions. All of these people had to reschedule the procedure and drink another gallon of bowel prep in order to get clear results on their test. We want you to have only one procedure that gives the most accurate results possible. Please closely follow the instructions that we are giving you. Thank you for watching this slideshow. We look forward to seeing you at your colonoscopy appointment. Please call us at 206-520-5000.